All right, everyone. Well, welcome again. I just want to give everybody a warm, special welcome. My name is Mary Robinson. I'm a registered dietitian and nutritionist with The Giant Company, and you are joining us for another week of our Easter dinner on a dime, where we provide you with affordable and nutritious recipes that are going to be perfect for your Easter dinner, but also perfect for um, any occasion, really. They're all going to be made in about 30 minutes. They are going to feature fresh produce, fresh spring produce, right? Which is chock full of nutrients um, and also just be something that you can enjoy with your entire family. So before I get into this recipe, I just want to take a moment and share my screen and tell you about the recipe because it's one of my favorites. Um, but it is found on our Savory database, Savory Magazine. If you're unfamiliar, definitely check this out. They've got some great recipes and a lot of different filters that you can use, you know, to find certain recipes if you're looking for something that's lower in sodium or has a guiding star. If you're familiar with our guiding star system, that's our nutrition navigation system where products and recipes earn stars. Um, um, according to their nutrition, which this one does indeed earn stars. I'm just flip my bacon here, which I will tell you about in just a couple moments. But we are making a carrot salad with bacon vinaigrette. Who doesn't love bacon? And who doesn't love the fact, as I mentioned about the guiding stars, that this recipe with bacon also earns a guiding star. You see, it's all about balance, right? How awesome is that? Um, there's also, and I will send out this uh, link in the recap email, but there's also a great little helpful video. If you're a visual learner like myself, you can play that for yourself to get additional information on this um, video. But yes, this recipe does indeed earn one guiding star. You can see it's very simple ingredients. Um, essentially, it's kind of like a... <clears throat> like a springtime slaw, if you will. <laughs> um, and this full recipe does make, it says it makes 12 servings. Honestly, I think you could get a lot more servings out of it. So I'm actually going to cut my recipe in half today. Um, that's one of the things that I learned. I, I made this recipe a couple weeks ago. Um, so I know what to expect today. But anyways, it is a large scale recipe, which I think helps with the affordability factor, because even though, you know, bacon's a little, maybe, maybe might be a little bit more of an expensive ingredient. We're only using three slices in my pared down recipe. Um, but, you know, that portion control, that portion size can really make a recipe much more affordable. So if you're making this for a crowd, it's going to feed a crowd. <laughs> Let me tell you that. All right, let's go ahead and then get started with our recipe. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my other camera so that you can see what's going on with our recipe today. And if you have any questions, as I am going through the recipe, you know, feel free to uh, use the chat feature. Don't be shy, don't be quiet. <laughs> I love to hear from all of you. Okay, so you can see in my skillet here, I've got our bacon going. As I mentioned, I did. I am cutting this recipe in half. So I only have three slices of bacon going on in my skillet. We are almost there. This has been cooking for a while. I like really crispy bacon. So I'm gonna get this bacon nice and crisp. So I'm gonna give it a couple more moments. And in the meantime, I used just our brand lower sodium bacon. Now remember, lower sodium bacon is just gonna be 25% less sodium than its original counterpart. You could use something like a turkey bacon if you're looking for something with a little bit less saturated fat. Um, but I do like the taste of traditional pork bacon. Uh, and especially because we're using such a limited amount in this recipe, I think it's fine to do. So that's going to continue to cook. And actually those bacon drippings are going to be um, used in the dressing. Yes, love, the, I, I agree. Somebody shared that they love the, the uh, giant brand low sodium bacon. I agree. Definitely, if you can find a low sodium bacon, go for it. Okay, the other base of this salad is going to be our cut and peeled matchstick carrots. So super simple, right? Just pick these up in the produce department. I love using these on my salads. That's actually one of my favorite ingredients to have. We're just gonna go ahead and put that in the bowl while our bacon is cooking. The original recipe does call for two bags, but like I said, I'm cutting mine in half. So that way I'm not eating carrots by myself for days and days. <laughs> but this is a perfect recipe to make for a crowd. Carrots, of course, provide us with vitamin A, fiber, um, also um, additional nutrients. There are some other vitamins and minerals in there, but it's definitely something to test out. If you're not a carrot fan, I think this would be a great recipe to give a try. 
I mean, yes, it's a lot of carrots, but we're adding a lot of delicious new or other ingredients that kind of offset the flavor. So, you know, maybe if you're not a fan of fresh carrots, this might be something to just give a try or even just try the matchstick carrots because they're cut very small. So I find that it's much more, you know, palatable in a salad or something like that. Definitely something to give a try. Okay, next ingredient that I'm going to work on is going to be a green apple. We're going to be shredding this guy in just a couple moments. We're going to use half of a green apple. We're going to add that to our carrot mixture. Uh, but go ahead. You can use any apple that you'd like. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the core here. But I like the crunch that a green apple provides, not to mention the beautiful color. And also... Um, the, the tart flavor that comes from a green apple, I think is, you can't compare. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this a shred with my box grater. It's probably going to go everywhere, but that's okay. I'll clean it up. <laughs> and you, if you don't have like a box grater, like what I'm using today, you can just thinly slice it. Or if you had a mandolin, I think a mandolin would work really well. Whoops. Um, tell me, do you, does anybody have a tried and true carrot side dish recipe that they have a, like a go-to when they're making, you know, a special holiday dinner. Feel free to share in the chat. I think carrots are other, you know, normally I prepare carrots uh, baked or roasted, especially for like special occasions, other than throwing them on a veggie tray, right? That's a quintessential carrot uh, way to use them. But anyways, yeah, if I would love to hear any other tried and true, especially like salads. I saw them great. Uh, but if anybody else has any favorite recipes to share in the chat, feel free. Oh, honey glazed carrots. Love that idea. All right, that quarter is just about done. So I'm just going to add that to our carrots. Any other tried and true recipes for carrots? Carrots are tricky, you see? I feel like it's Kind of a tricky thing. So if you don't have one, maybe you can give this a try and this can go become your go-to recipe, huh? <laughs> I think it's what I would make for a special occasion again. It's, it's not very hard, as you'll see in just a couple moments here. All right, let's finish off this one. My bacon is done, so I did go ahead and um, turn that off. We're going to pull that out in just a moment, but I'm going to get this shredded and ready. If you're just joining us, we're making a carrot salad with a bacon vinaigrette. Ooh, copper penny carrot salad uses tomato soup. I like that idea. That sounds good. Sounds like a good recipe to try. I'm always looking for new recipes to incorporate. Oh, and back to the carrots too. You know what? If you didn't use like the matchstick already pre-chopped carrots, you could certainly shred a large carrot. Um, if you have those on hand, right, you don't have to purchased a matchstick carrots. They're just very convenient, I will say. Um, but that's another option as well. Okay, our apple is finished. Let me go ahead and jump back to the chat. I love to see so much interaction. Ooh, someone said, mentioned that they have a recipe for a low-fat carrot cake that's delicious. Yeah, oh, and it uses fresh grated char carrots. Oh. Jello, orange jello with grated carrots and pineapple. I have never heard of that. That's very interesting. Um, yeah, definitely give that a try and let us know how it tastes. Okay, uh, let's go and work on our red, red onion. So, the next part of our salad, as you can see, we've got our carrots, we've got our apples, and next up, we have our red onion. So, for our red onion, we're going to use a quarter of this red onion because it's a very large red onion. Now, I do love red onions. Red onions are one of my absolute favorites. I use them all the time in my salads, and I think they're just, they're just the best. <laughs> I could go on and on about red onions. We're going to thinly slice this guy. You could probably grate him if you'd like, but um, I really don't want it to overpower the other delicate flavors that we have in the salad, which I kind of found like the last time I did this, that was one of my critiques was the red onion was just a little too overpowering. So I'm going to be very mindful how I cut this red onion. I'm going to try to do very thin slices. Um, but I think it really adds, again, a beautiful color, this beautiful purple. I think that's great for the season. Um, but it also just gives a great flavor, right? 
I love red onions, as I already mentioned. <laughs> but let's go ahead and finish chopping our red onion, and then we're going to work on our vinaigrette. So things are moving right along here. Just a couple more ingredients, and then that our recipe will be complete. So a quarter of a red onion if you're cutting this recipe in half, like I am. And let me just put this aside. We are done chopping. Pull that from the center. I do need to grab some paper towels. Paper towels for my bacon to block that off. And then we're gonna work on our vinaigrette. All right, so my three slices of bacon are ready to go. I'm not seeing any questions from the chat. So I'm hoping everybody is tracking. Okay, so we're gonna leave those bacon drippings. Now I will say when I made the full recipe version of this, I thought it had way, way too much bacon grease in my opinion. And I love bacon grease, especially, you know, when we're doing a vinaigrette like this. Uh, make sure your heat is off for this stuff, by the way. But I will say just, it was way overpowering. So if you are making the full size recipe, I would probably not use all of the grease in the pan. There's not much in this one. This could have been a leaner pack of bacon. Every bacon is a little different. Oh, my honey is going everywhere. I, I flipped my honey container upside down to get it out and it's all over my stove, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, first ingredient to our vinaigrette is gonna be apple cider vinegar. Love apple cider vinegar. I use that all the time in dressings. Um, and I was just saying to myself, I was gonna buy dressing from the store. And I was like, I have all this vinegar at home. I should just make myself a dressing. So here we are making myself a dressing, right? Uh, okay, so original recipe calls for a third of a cup. We're gonna do half of a third of a cup, being that we are cutting this one in half. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Here we go. Okay, that's going to our, straight into our skillet here. Okay, if it's a little warm, that um, acid is just gonna kind of cook off a little bit as you can see. And then our next ingredient is going to be honey. I believe it's going to be one tablespoon, but let me flip quickly back. Yep. Just one tablespoon of honey. So that's all that there is in this ingredients for our, our vinaigrette is just vinegar, which is getting stuck in the nostrils. I just inhaled too much. Um, vinegar, bacon, grease, and honey. If you would like to omit the honey, you certainly can. I, I do. I like the flavor that the honey gives once I can get all my honey out. Now, of course, I'm going to have sticky hands and a sticky stove, but that's all right. That comes with the territory with cooking, right? All right. Just about there with our honey. And then we only have two final ingredients stores. Well, three and counting, including the bacon. Okay, that's close enough to a tablespoon here. And my honey is just about finished. We're going to add that. And then we're going to give all of those ingredients a stir. <laughs> Who else enjoys making their own vinaigrettes? Feel free to share in the chat. One of my go-tos is just a simple like olive oil, equal parts olive oil and vinegar. And then I usually add some chopped garlic um, and then additional like dried spices. And that's kind of my go-to lunch um, vinaigrette. I just feel better about doing that versus, I mean, I like bottle dressings, don't get me wrong. And I do use them often. But and I, I'm actually going to turn this on a very low heat and bring it to a simmer. But look how delicious that looks. We are we do want it to reduce a little bit, so I'm actually going to turn it a little bit. All right. But yes, share in the chat if you love dressings too. Yes, exactly. Somebody just mentioned right. I love bottle dressings, especially if I want something like unique or different or specific. But when you make it yourself. You can control what's in it and you know exactly the ingredients within the dressing. I love that part about making your own dressings too. And they're very, very affordable and very, very easy. So, okay, let's go ahead and finish off our salad. I'm gonna just give this a little stir here before we put the rest of the ingredients there. I really wanna break up those red onions. Um, oh, somebody was talking about herbs and parsley. I'm gonna have to go back to that for a moment. Throw some pepper in here. If you'd like, you can also add a little bit of salt, but I'm definitely gonna add a little pepper. Just a little extra flavor. Oops, let me move this so you can see. There we go. We're going to go ahead and put that bacon in my bowl. Look at that. Look at all of our colors. We've got the beautiful purples from our red onion, the green from our green apple, and of course the orange from our carrots. Okay, 
going to go ahead and just finish blotting that. And in the meantime, I will crush my bacon. We do want to crumble our bacon. Nice and crisp. I will say use turkey bacon, which again, you totally can, but turkey bacon doesn't quite crumble as well as traditional bacon. So just, you know, make sure you give it a good chop with your knife. All right, that's in there. And then finally, we've got our very last ingredient, which is going to give us a little bit of sweetness. We are going to do about a little over a quarter cup of some golden raisin. This is going to just kind of finish off, you know, give another texture, give a little more sweetness because you notice that there's only a tablespoon of honey in, the, in an organic grit, so not very sweet. All right, quarter cup, and a little over a quarter cup of our golden raisins. My hands are all sticky from that honey still. Well, that one looks interesting. I'm going to pull that one out. Okay. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and throw that in. That's going to just give it more flavor. Oh, look at that. My vinaigrette is boiling. So yes, half of a three quarters cup is the exact recipe measurement there, which is why I did a little more than a, a quarter cup. Okay, if you're just joining us, we are making a carrot vinegar, or I'm sorry, carrot salad with bacon vinaigrette, and that is to a boil. I do want that to just cook off a little bit more, so I'm going to stir up my, my raisins and my bacon, and this is looking great, but this is definitely something that you can throw together the morning of. Um, I would not recommend to make it the night before. Because what happens is when you do, well, actually, no, you, you could do half of it the night before. I would say mix up this bowl the night before, make your dressing, but don't mix the two. So once you store it overnight, um, the bacon solidifies, the bacon from the vinaigrette does solidify. Um, so, you know, you kind of get a, it's best served when the bacon is, bacon grease is not at um, a cold temperature. Okay. So I would recommend, you know, if you want to make if this, if you're looking to save some time, you want to make it up in advance, that's completely fine, but don't, um, don't mix the two, keep the, the vinaigrette separate. And maybe actually like before you put the vinaigrette on, reheat it in a skillet or even probably the microwave would be fine. Okay. We're going to turn that off and we are going to finish off our salad. Check that out. And we're just going to pour our vinaigrette over top of our salad. The hot vinaigrette is going to slightly cook our ingredients, especially the carrots. I think it helps to really soften them. Um, and then, of course, the acid is going to break down a bit too. The acid from the vinegar. So you really get you still get the crunch from the from the carrots. Don't worry about that. But you do. There's still like a little bit of a softness that comes out of that. But and and there you go. You just kind of give that a stir. And that's our salad. That is our carrot salad with our bacon vinaigrette. You saw that we made that in well under 30 minutes. Something that's a great affordable Easter side for you all or any time side, right? This is just a great spring side salad. I love it. Um, but you've got all your different flavors. But as you can see, you can kind of see what I'm, I'm meaning. Like there's a nice glisten on the salad right now. But once you pop that in the fridge, it's going to solidify and not look glistening, right? So this would be a really great thing to uh, serve on a dinner table. So if you are making it in advance, just don't um, mix the two. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my other camera on and get to this these chats because I think you all shared so many good things. Um, but if anybody has any questions, feel free to share it in the chat now. I'm going to go ahead and scroll on through. That's all that we had for today, though. So if you do need to hop off, feel free to do so. Um, I'm so glad that some folks are really, really excited about this recipe. Oh, okay, great. I'm so glad that somebody asked about if you can make it in advance. So I think I did cover that question. But if you have any other questions about that, feel free to ask away. Um, yes, no, I, I, yeah, this is one that I would probably make the day of. Oh, yes. Um, I'm glad that people also love doing, um, their own, uh, vinaigrettes and making their own dressings. Ooh, yeah, you can definitely try chorizo. Somebody said they don't have bacon, but you could give chorizo a, a try. I love raisins in a salad too, especially with carrots as well. All right, I'm not seeing any questions. Oh, yes, uh, thank you. Parsley, yes, fresh parsley if you have it. 
Um, but also you can use dried parsley. So I'm showing some dried parsley here in my uh, second camera. You might have to flip over here. I just have a little bit of dried parsley. You can use dried or fresh. Uh, I think it's a little more affordable to use dried parsley. I had it sitting there and I completely forgot. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, but yes, so I'm just going to go ahead and give a sprinkle of dried parsley. You can use fresh. Of course, that's going to make it a little, you know, a little bit more costly, but you only have to use a little bit of parsley. A little parsley goes a long way. It also gives a great green color. I'm going to just give that an additional stir. Thank you for the reminder. I'm just going too, too fast. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not seeing any other questions. I will hang around for just a couple moments. Um, but yes, thank you all so, so much for joining and we'll see you at the next class.